Hey everyone, and welcome to this video, kind of a practical video on deep learning for natural language processing. How can we take text and use it with what we already know about deep learning? So far, when we've been looking at deep learning, we've been dealing with structured data, meaning things that look like tables, comma separated values. So we've originally looked at something like this, there where there was nice columns, outlook, temperature, humidity, wind, and bike, and each of those columns had particular a small set of potential values. We looked at data like this, slightly more complex, but still in columnar form. But when we look at other things, like particularly text, that's called unstructured data, stuff that doesn't fit so neatly in columns. So if we look at tweets, for example, we have these. These are just some sample tweets. This afternoon has been too frustrating. Bananagrams, just a one word tweet, and then longer tweets as well. So one factor we need to look at, and we've kind of discussed this in the previous video, is what pre-processing would we need to do in order to do this, to use these strings, these tweets, in deep learning. One issue is tokenization, how to divide a string into individual words, or segmentation, we called it in the previous video. So in this case, what counts as a word? Well, COVID-19, there's a hyphen there, but we'd like that to count as a word. And when we look at pre-existing tokenizers, a word followed by a hyphen followed by a number is always considered a single word. But when we look at things like this, so Mr. O'Neill thinks that the boys' stories about Chile's capital aren't amusing. So how do we consider O'Neill? Do we use it as one word? Do we divide at the punctuation? Do we keep the punctuation and divide? There are various options. And should we treat O'Neill the same as we treat aren't? So is aren't one word or not one word? Should we somehow convert it into R and NT? There's questions there of what would be the most preferable way. Or what about co-education? The co there seems kind of weird to separate out and see co is one word and education another. But then you get things like this, the hold them back and drag them away maneuver. Those seem like all separate words <laughs> divided by hyphens, so we'd want to divide that. So it's not maybe a uniform thing. And should we consider white space as that the word white space the same as white space <laughs> what the word white followed by a space followed by the word space i guess are those the same or are they should we treat them differently then we look at larger units and this is a natural language processing component called named entity recognizers so the university of southern north dakota at hoople should we consider those all completely separate words or should we glom them together into one thing the university of southern north dakota at hoople is one entity PDQ Bach, the same. So names, whatever they are, Jones Smith, you know, is that two different tokens or is that one token? Capital One, should Santa Fe be two words or one word? So it's not always maybe a space, isn't always a divider between words. But we're going to ignore these complexities for now and just kind of forge ahead and see how far we can get and create a system that at least works and processes text. And let's go back to those tweets. So one approach would be, well, we can just kind of put, it, just mush everything into columns, right? So the first word will be in the first column, second word in the second column, and so on. And if things are short, like bananagrams, we'll just pad all those columns with blanks, so blank words. And if the tweet is too long, we'll just truncate the tweet. So we'll just stop it at some point. So that would be one good way of doing it. Well, not good, as it turns out. Historically, what people have done is not that approach, but create what's called a bag of words. And let me explain that. So let's take a look at that first tweet. This afternoon has been too frustrating. So we're going to divide that up into words and just have an unordered set of words, a bag of words, as I've shown here. So they're not ordered anymore. They just are a bag of words. And then we have some vocabulary we decide upon. So we might have 10,000 words in our vocabulary. It's like a pre-existing dictionary. Or maybe we go through all our texts in our collection and figure out what the unique words are and use that as our vocabulary. But the columns would represent items in our vocabulary. And we just have a binary 1 or 0. If the, if the word is present in the document, we put a 1. And if it's not present, we would put a 0. So it would look something like this, right? So we have this binary thing. So now that looks in a form that we can use for deep learning. So each document is represented by a finite number of columns. 
and we can go ahead and use what we've been already using. And it's really easy to do. Keras has this tokenizer that allows we give it a corpus, so a collection of strings. It'll divide it up into words, so it'll segment things up. And that binary means oh, if it's present in the document, it'll be a one. If it's not present, it'll be a zero. We might want to do things a little bit differently. So instead of that binary distinction, a one or a zero, we could count how many occurrences of each unique word there are. So if we're document one, if we look at the a uh column, we see there are two of them. So we put a two there. And then your, there's two you, yours. So, and so on. So we just keep counting how many words there are. So in document one, there were two us and two yours. And again, that's a form we could use directly in our deep learning systems. And we can convert our text just by saying, pretty much the same operation, but this time we say mode equals count. So we're counting the number of occurrences. Now the problem is, is that, you know, this text is 46 words long. Maybe it's better to use the frequency. So instead of two there, we would do whatever two divided by the total number of words 46 is. And so we could convert it to frequencies and that would look like this. And that command in Keras is this, that we just say mode equals frequency and get the frequency. So in our document one there, about 4% of our words are a uh, and 4% your. But maybe this isn't the best approach. So let's look at another, something called TF-IDF. And this is called term frequency inverse document frequency. Now let's take a look at that previous approach with just getting frequencies. And here's an example where document one, 3% of the document was a uh, and 4% the. So those were the really high occurring words in the document, as was in document two, 25 or 2.5% two of the words were a, uh, and almost 5% of the words were the. But it turns out these are sort of uninteresting words. They're not helping us if we're trying to make classification, probably. The more interesting words are like the words like piano, keys, and compassion. So we'd sort of like to up that those values somehow. And that's the intuition that we're interested in. What's the interesting words here? If we are trying, trying to decide, are these documents about pianos or about Buddhism and compassion? You know, those words we, that are more relevant, it would seem, are the words piano, keys, and compassion. So term frequency is how often the word occurs in the text. And IDF, inverse document frequency, is how often the word occurs in the documents or how many documents contain that word. Here's the formula. We just simply multiply the term frequency by the IDF. And TF can be either the raw count of how many times the word occurred in the document or the frequency. Then 4% of the words in this document are the. So that's term frequency. And IDF is this formula. It always looks complex when people look at formulas. They tend to ignore them. <laughs> but Actually, this formula is pretty easy, so that n sub d is the number of documents in the collection. So if you have 50 documents in the collection, that top would be 1 plus 50, like 51. And df is the number of documents that have the term t in them. So if we're looking at the word the, that bottom is how many documents in our collection have the word the in them? So maybe almost all of them, maybe 50 of them have the word the in them. So every document in our collection has the. So it works like this. So again, if there are 50 documents in the collection and all have the word the, that would be the first one, the IDF of the. So it's log of 1 plus 50 over 1 plus 50 plus we 1 there, and that would be 1. And I'm doing log base 2. You can do the traditional log as well. IDF of compassion, on the other hand, let's say of the 50 documents in our collection, only 5 had the word compassion. So that IDF is a little bit over four. So this is showing that compassion is a much more interesting word than the. So that's the idea between uh, TF-IDF. And we implement it by doing this. So we just say mode equals TF-IDF and Keras again automatically will convert the text. So we convert the text, so a collection of strings representing the documents into a column form. Each value is the TF-IDF of that particular word in the vocabulary. So 0 0.76214 would be the TF-IDF of a particular word in our vocabulary for that first document. So that's it. It's enough to get started. 
Again, I mentioned some of the complexities, but I'm kind of avoiding them at the moment just so we get some hands-on experience working with text. So I hope this is enough to get started. Take care. Bye.